Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today. For this one, we are going to review yet another Japanese sake. And as I always tell you with these videos, I am by no means an expert in Japanese sake, but it's just something that I really enjoy doing as a little kind of side branch of the channel because these Japanese sakes are probably even more handmade and artisanal than the craft beers that I normally review. You know, it is um, really a lot of the work that goes into these these uh, Japanese sakes is very much hands on. You hand washing the rice and all of these sort of things and it really is a very beautiful kind of artisanal product that you you get out of them so I really hope that you guys enjoy these videos when I do put them up on the channel kind of periodically but for this one we are going to go to a, a new prefecture that I've never visited and I have actually tasted this sake in the shop and it really made me want to buy the bottle and do a review of it for you guys here on the channel so I really hope you enjoy this one and I do hope that you enjoy my sake reviews that I'm putting up for you so for this one we are going to go to Tochigi prefecture which is a little bit to the north of Tokyo next to Ibaraki in the east and uh, Nagano in the west and for this one we're going to visit Utsunomiya Shuzo. So they sell their sakes under the brand name uh, Shikizakura which literally means like cherry blossom of the four seasons I guess it would translate to and this particular sake is their Nigorinama which literally means kind of raw and unfiltered and it's called Fuyu no Hana which means the flower of winter or winter flower however you want to translate that exactly. This little notice on the top is basically just telling you to keep the sake bottle upright as well but really nicely presented this one and it comes in at 15% ABV so this one is just a Nigori Zaki although the guy in the shop that I bought this one from did tell me that it is a Honjozo as well so Nigori Zaki is basically just it's unfiltered and uh, Honjozo is when they add a little bit of distilled alcohol to it and usually this puts the ABV up a little bit obviously but it gives it a little bit of a slightly kind of drier taste as well and the Nigori Zakis are often quite sweet but this sake, um, I did taste this in the shop and I said this one is really really nice but it was also very cheap as well, I think I only paid about 850 yen for this bottle which is, you know, it's crazy, that's about 8.5 American dollars or you know, about 10 Canadian, 10, 10 Australian and things like that I guess um, I don't know how many euros and stuff that would be, but yeah, somewhere around 8 euros, something like that. But it should be really nice. As I say, I've tried this one before, and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do from Utsunomiya Shuzo in the future. Very first time I'm reviewing one of their sakis for you here on the channel. And um, There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more reviews, be it beer, sake or whiskey, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beers, whiskey, sakes and things like that based on country, city, county, prefecture, whatever it is that interests you. Do check out the playlist of things from different uh, countries. What I might do with the sake reviews is actually make playlists from the different prefectures because there's a hell of a lot of sake breweries here in Japan and hopefully when I actually move here at some point in the next kind of few years and I'm sure in, you know maybe the next five, ten years, something like that, we will live in Japan for a little while and um, you know I would love to do um, kind of prefecture playlists and things like that. That's something I would really love to get um, into a little bit more. But yeah, do ch do get in touch and let me know some of the other whiskies, beers, sakes and things like that that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Utsunomiya Shuzo then, so <coughs> pardon me, voice is going a little bit funny but yeah Utsunomiya Shuzo were founded back in 1871 and there's a lot of sake breweries seem to be seem to have been founded around this time just when the Meiji restoration was actually taking place but this this sake brewery are based in the Yanagida area of Utsunomiya in Tochigi prefecture which as I mentioned is a little bit to the north of Tokyo just next to Ibaraki and I believe it's Nagano out in the west and um, but the company was founded by Midoriki Imai and it also operated an alcohol store for a period of time as well. After the Second World War the brewery was forced to stop brewing because of a shortage of materials, mainly rice and things like that, but the brewing side of the company was later revived in 1952 and today the company remains in the Imai family and it's owned today by Shohei Imai who was introduced to brewing by his father at quite a young age and he trained at the Kumamoto Shuzo Sake Company before returning to take over his family business after the death of his father whose name was Genchiro and he died 
died at the quite young age of only 45. He died very young of cancer, I believe it was. And, you know, a lot of the the website is kind of a tribute to, to Genshiro Imai for a lot of the work that he did in the company. I think he was one of the ones who really helped this company kind of grow and give it very kind of stable foundations if you like. But apparently the rice that these guys use in their sake is very special because it ripens in the field quite quickly but they work with six different farmers around the Yanagida area and since 1972 they've been experimenting with different rice varieties and the rice that they use in their sake is known as Gohyaku Manseki which literally literally translates into English as 5 million stones. But the sake is sold under the brand Shiki Zakura, which translates into English as the sake of the four se or the the four season cherry blossoms. If you like, the sake of the four uh, cherry blossom seasons. So yeah, it's um, quite an interesting one. This, as I say, um, when you go onto their website, it is very. <coughs> Pardon me, I don't know. I need to maybe drink a little bit more water. But it says to it says on the website that it's basically the. Um, a lot of the stuff, the, the website is very kind of old school Japanese if you like and um, it's got a lot of cherry blossom things, a lot of nice old photos of Genchiro Imai and things like that and lots of old paintings and stuff so I will put the brewery website in the description below as I said and you can check out um, all the stuff on there but it's really interesting you can use Google Translate and Chrome and it will translate a lot of the, the different things for you but Japanese of course is a very very complex language and even Michiko will come across some kanjis and things like that that she doesn't know how to uh, to kind of to read properly and things like that it's that complex a language but yeah that's all you really need to know about Utsunomiya Shuzo for the moment let's get on to the actual tasting of this sake itself so as I mentioned to you this little notice on the top just tells you keep the sake box bottle upright um, but yeah let's get have a look at the artwork on this one then so the kanji on this one as you can he see here this main part in the middle is shiki uh, shiki zakura and as I said that just means the cherry blossoms of the four seasons on the side here it says uh, in that little bit is here again it says nigori uh, nigori nama which means like a kind of raw unfiltered sake as I say you can see the colour of this that this is an unfiltered sake and uh, this little bit on the side here means Fuyu no Hana which means the, the flower of winter or winter flower however you want to kind of say that exactly but also you can see on the top here um, it has quite a nice little bottle cap on there as well so nicely presented sake this one it's a green bottle of course I have had some green bottle sakes too I don't think there's any rule to what colour of bottle and things that they use you know the green and brown ones obviously protect the sake from light uh, and some of them actually use blue bottles as well and I've never figured out if there is actually a rule for that but I think it probably will be the same as the craft beers you know just to protect them from um, different lights but as I say this one is a 15% and um, Nigori Zaki, an unfiltered sake. If this guy actually wants to open up, come on. There we go. Let's just take this off. There we go. Yeah, so let's get a little bit out into the glass and we will have a taste of this one then. So, as you can see with this one, absolutely beautiful. Now, as I said to you, I did taste this sake in the shop and it was very very nice I mean we tried some sakis that were very very expensive actually and you know some of them were really quite nice but I tasted this one immediately it was just like I want a bottle of this and it's, it's quite funny that I mean it's a lot of people say with different wines and things that you can try some of the cheaper wines and they are just you know very very nice and I think the same kind of applies to sake but then we've all got different palates and stuff so as I tell you in all of these sake videos I'm still learning when it comes to actually tasting these but the things that we should rate Nihon Shu on is uh, the floral qualities the fruitiness also the earthiness sweetness dryness acidity as well impact and also the tail end of the sake too so yeah this one I think should be um, really quite interesting. So this one, I can see there's actually a few bubbles kind of um, sitting on this one. Maybe it's because the glass has just been kind of freshly washed, if you like. But there you can see with this one, it's poured. I really, it's poured. You know, as the nigoris always do, it's poured that almost kind of milky colour. It looks like almost a kind of watery milk this one and with the the ginjos and the dai ginjos the clear sakis the transparent ones you can get different colors on them that you know like sometimes they can be a little bit blue a little bit green even sometimes a little bit yellow and stuff like this but usually the nigoris are pretty kind of uniform in being this kind of milky um, sort of icing sugar white colour um, but yeah you know lovely appearance for a nigori zake and this is one Michiko's mum 
and uh, and I both really like the Nigoris, and I think Michiko likes the Daiginjos, but I really like the the Nigoris, the unfiltered ones. And these do actually, it's oddly, it's odd because these do tend to be a little bit cheaper than the Ginjos and the Daiginjos, but they taste, to me at least, absolutely beautiful. But we both enjoyed this one. We we tried it in the shop, but yeah, lovely looking sake this one. So let's take a look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this. So yeah, this one to me, this has a good little bit of citrusy quality in it. You can smell that it's got a good bit of a floral character as well. It's citrusy and floral, this one, I think, for the most part. But it also has that kind of typical sweetness that you would expect from the nigoris. The nigoris are always just that little bit sweeter because of all the rice and stuff that's still in there, that's left in there from the brewing process. As I've told you before, you know, these, the sakes have this triple fermentation process. It's actually quite similar that, you know, they're converting the starch and the rice into sugars that can be made into alcohol. That's the idea behind the, the brewing of sake. And, um, it's, it, you know, it's a similar idea to the beers. You're taking the sugars out of the, the barley grains and stuff like that and converting them to alcohols. But, yeah. You've got three different stages here and the differences in the rice, the differences in the soil, the water that's used and things like that can play a huge different can make a huge difference to the the flavour of the sake itself. But for me, this one comes across as quite sweet, but it's got a nice slightly citrusy edge to it and also a little bit of a kind of floral character. I can't really pick out it's almost like it's I don't know if it's a little bit melon or something like that. It's got a little bit of a quite juicy, fruity quality to it. So it'll be interesting to, uh, to have a taste of this one and see, but I think maybe a tiny little bit of earthiness in there, but not very much. I'm getting the impression that there might be a little bit of a, there might be a little touch of acidity to this one as we, in, in the impact, just there is a little bit of that sharpness to it mixing in with the floral and citrusy notes that I'm picking up, but yeah. Little touch of earthiness. It does smell quite sweet, as I say, which is kind of what you expect from the, the Nigoris generally. But yeah, it's got a lovely aroma to it. As I always say with these sakes and whiskies and craft beers and things like that, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma before you actually have a taste of them. So let's let's have a go at this one then. So this one is um, the Nigori Nama, uh, basically the winter flower sake from Utsunomiya Shuzo and their um, Shiki Zakura range that they do in Tochigi Prefecture here in Japan. Let's get stuck in. Slanja Skull Kampai. Yeah. That's really, really nice. Um, with this one, it's, it does have a little bit of an acidity on the impact there. It really is quite nice. There's a little bit of earthiness kind of underpinning this one too, which is really nice. Yeah. I like, I like how everything's going together in this one. As I say, the impact in this... We should, you know, you should always talk about the impact when you first taste the sake. Um, it's definitely got a little bit of um, an acidity to it in the beginning, but it's quite minimal, actually. I would say it's quite minimal. Yeah. In the beginning, it does have a little tiny bit of acidity, and then it just smooths out this one. I think the rice is given a really quite nice... Um, it's given like a really quite nice um, just earthy underlining but otherwise on top of that it is kind of um, quite sweet I would say um, the middle of your palate I find is quite oily with this one but this this Nigori is a little bit more um, I would say it's a little bit lighter in body compared to some of the other ones that I've had. Um, it's almost a good way, I guess, to kind of describe the way the Nigoris come across in their mouthfeels. They do have the oily character that you might get from a Ginjo, for example, but they do have a little bit of this almost kind of chalky mouthfeel that just kind of comes. It's, it's almost that sort of slightly chalky mouthfeel that you get, chalky yet oily, when you actually just eat boiled rice. You know, it's kind of got that sort of quality to it, this one.
yeah. But I'm finding the further and further you go into this one, the sweeter it gets. Um, and as I say to me, this sake comes across as being, it, it has got a good earthiness to it, that, but it's quite a smooth and almost sweet earthiness. And it really works, it really does work well. Um, on the sides of your palate, there is a little bit of a kind of citrusy and floral note to this one. And the, towards the front corners of your palate, I think there's a little bit of a floral quality there. And it's just a little bit slight, a little bit more grassy around the front curve of the palate. There is a little bit of fruitiness to this one in there. Um, and I would say, I was picking up a little bit of melon in the, the aroma and I think that's all, there is just almost a little touch of a melony quality to this one in the flavour. Yeah, um, it does have that kind of typical, it, it has a little bit of a melony quality to it. It's also a little touch kind of um, apricotty or something like that as well as I say, a lot of the fruits that I get out of these Nihon shoes really do remind me of the yogurts that um, my mum used to give me in my lunchbox when I was when I was young and going to school. Um, it really has a little bit. I think it's a little bit of melon, maybe a little touch of um, of apricotty kind of flavours in this one. It's almost the the fruity flavours in these sakes are very very kind of subtle if you like, and it works very very well with the sweetness of the rice. This one for me, the sweetness of the rice and that slightly sweet earthy quality that the rice has is the kind of defining feature of this one and it does have that slightly bigger oily and almost um, as I say, it's, I want to use the word chalky um, as, to as, to, as a descriptor for the mouthfeel, it's just a very nice thick mouthfeel that you get from these Nigori Zakis and that's probably what I really like about them the most, it's just the mouthfeels that, um, that you get out of these but this is a really really nice Nihon Shu, this one, it's one of the best Nigoris that I've come across and I, you know, I couldn't believe that it was only um, 800 yen when, uh, when I tried it, you know, it's just a beautiful, beautiful sake, this. So if you get the chance to try this one, I would have a go at it. From what I understand, this one is released every year. Um, this particular one is released every year in the winter, but they do different nigoris throughout the course of the year. But yeah, have a go at this for yourself and see what you think. The thing I guess we haven't mentioned so far is uh, the tail end of it. So let's just have a little look at that. Yeah, in the tail end of this one, I think the earthiness, as I say in the beginning, it's got a little touch of acidity in the beginning, but then it just smooths out and you start to get the more oily and sweet flavours out of it. But in the tail end, the sweetness, really, the ricey sweetness and the earthiness starts to push its way out a little bit more. I'm definitely finding in the tail end of this sake, it's the, earthy, the earthiness and the sweetness of the rice that's really mixing together, but at the same time, you've got a little bit of that almost melony quality coming out of this one and um, a little bit of the fruitiness is coming out of it as well and the the center of your palate just dries out a little bit and again that really promotes the the sort of ricey sweetness in it too which is uh, very very nice so yeah just the, the tail end of this one is really nice I'm finding this to be quite a sweet nigori but the the characteristic of this one I think I think the real sort of pinnacle of this one for me is the way that the the earthy flavours are contributing to, contributing to this and it's not a, a dark earthiness at all, it is quite a sweet earthiness and it blends very very well with the sweeter qualities that the rice is also offering. And I like that, as I say, the main thing that affects your flavours in these Nihon shoes is the, the type of rice that's used. It's a very, you know, they can be grown in different soils, they can be given different waters and things like this. You can't, you know, the water obviously used in these will affect the flavour of the sake too. But to me, the real kind of thing of this is just that slight earthiness that this um, that this one has, and it offers. A, it really brings out some of the sweetness of the rice too. But um, yeah, that five million stone rice, I think, is definitely very, very interesting, and I guess it's something that's quite unique to this particular um, sake brewery as well. I don't know how many sake breweries there are in Tochigi Prefecture, but hopefully, I can get up there at some point and have a look at. It. Apparently, Utsunomiya is very well known for its uh, gyoza restaurants, and that's one of the Japanese food that I really really love so yeah let's leave it at that for this one it's just a very interesting Nigori and I think the 
the kind of main features for me of this one are the the sweetness of the rice and also the little kind of sweet earthy character that it has underneath but otherwise it's quite fresh you get some nice grassy and citrusy notes out of this one and a nice little bit of melony fruit as well it's just it's another very very nice sack and as i say i really enjoy these because they're such a handmade artisanal product but yeah let's leave it at that for this one so just to give it its proper name and things this one uh, is the Shi uh, Shikizakura Nori uh, Nigori Nama Fuyu no Hana, the winter flower unfiltered sake from the four se the cherry blossom f the four seasons cherry blossom range at Utsunomiya Shuzo in uh, Togi. Uh, how do we say this, uh, in Tochigi Prefecture, next to Ibaraki and Nagano in Japan. Lovely, lovely Nigori Saki, this one. So have a go at it for yourself and see what you think. But once again, thank you for watching my reviews. I hope this one hasn't been too much of a ramble, but thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon with more. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Make sure you check out my social media. Have a go with some of these Sakis from Utsunomiya Shuzo. This one I would really recommend. I really this was one that just really struck me in the shop when I tried it. It's absolutely lovely, and if you like the Nigo Rizakis, I think you will um, quite enjoy this one as well. But thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. The Shigi Zakura uh, Nigori Nama Fuyu no Hana from Utsunomiya Shuzo in uh, Utsunomiya Tochigi Prefecture here in Japan. Until the next time, slanju just now. I'll catch you guys later. Slanju, skull, kampai.